be a butterfly. We laid the larva carefully on thistle leaves. Hi, my name is Miss Jessica, and I am the new librarian at the Fayetteville Public Library, and this is preschool story time for ages three to five. You guys will see me on Tuesdays with Miss Stacy. I want to also invite you to our Super Saturday event, which is going to be Saturday from 10 to 11 in the Event Center, and we're going to have a magician, Aaron Acosta, there to show us some really cool tricks. I'm so happy you guys are here with me today. Can you guess what we're gonna talk about? Butterflies. I brought some really great butterfly books to read to you. I wore my best butterfly dress and I even brought a butterfly habitat that I've been keeping and it's got some real life chrysalises inside. So you guys will be able to see what that looks like after the caterpillars spin in their little chrysalis. So if you're ready to get started, let's sing a welcome song. If you'd like to read a book, clap your hands. If you'd like to read a book, clap your hands. If you'd like to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you'd like to read a book, clap your hands. If you'd like to read a book, stomp your feet. If you'd like to read a book, stomp your feet. If you'd like to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you'd like to read a book, stomp your feet. If you'd like to read a book, shout hooray, hooray. If you'd like to read a book, shout hooray, hooray. If you'd like to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you'd like to read a book, shout hooray, hooray. Okay, friends, like I said, we're going to be talking about butterflies today. And the first book I'm going to read to you is called Butterfly House. And it's by Eve Bunting, and it's illustrated by Greg Shedd. I like these illustrations because they're very realistic, and he used paint. And so each picture looks like a really pretty painting. <clears throat> when I was just a little girl, I saw a small black creature like a tiny worm and saved it from a greedy jay who wanted it for lunch. I carried it inside, safe on its wide green leaf, 
My grandpa said it was a larva and soon would be a butterfly. We laid the larva carefully on thistle leaves inside an empty jar, put in a twig for it to climb, then made a lid of soft white paper all stuck around with glue. My grandpa knew exactly what to do. I raised a butterfly myself, he said, when I was just your age. How strange to think my grandpa was once young like me. We would have been best friends if I'd been there back then, I said. My grandpa smiled. It worked out anyhow. We're best friends now. Up in his room, we found a box. I cut a window in its side, then covered it with a screen. Soon I looked inside and see my larva looking back at me. What would she see? A human face so big and scary, strange and starey? What would she think? I want it pretty till she goes, I said. And so Grandpa and I drew flowers on colored paper, cone flowers, purple, blue, and marigolds, lantana, brightest flame, and thistles too. We wedged a garden twig inside the box for her to walk on so her wings could dry once she became a butterfly. My grandpa knows the flowers butterflies like best, the ones where they can rest and drink the sweet, clear nectar. We glued the painted flowers inside the box so it was bright with color, made a sky above, the lid all blue with small white cotton clouds and green with tops of trees that seemed to sway in soundless air. I made a curve of rainbow like a hug to keep her safe while she was there. We set the jar inside and closed the painted lid. Through the screened window, I could see the garden house, a place of flowers and space and waiting stillness. Each day, I put out leaves for food and watched my larva change. My grandpa knew when it was time to gently pull away the paper top she hung from. I taped it to the wall inside her house and let her be. She would hang free inside the chrysalis that kept her hidden from the world. Inside that magic place, she grew, transformed herself, came out, drooped, limp, and slack with crumpled wings. She was a butterfly, all spotted orange, black, and brown, as if someone had shaken paints and let the drops fall down. Our painted lady, Grandpa said, it's time. He meant that it was time for her to leave for her new life. I swallowed tears. From the beginning, I had known today would come. Now it was here. My grandpa took my hand. Cry if you like, he said. We understand. We carried out the box and raised the lid. I watched her falter as she felt the first warm touch of sun, saw trees, felt breezes brush across her wings. She rose, then rested on the fig tree branch. I saw her fly. Goodbye. So many years have passed. I'm as old as Grandpa was that spring when I was young. I live in the house that once was his. The garden glows with cone flowers, purple, blue, and marigolds, lantana, brightest flame, and thistles too. Now every spring the painted ladies come. They float and drift like blossoms. When I walk, they flutter by to kiss me with a painted wing. Sometimes they cling as though I'm a flower myself. My neighbors cannot understand. Our flowers are the same as yours, they say each time they visit me. We even planted thistles to invite the butterflies, but they don't come. They fill your air like autumn leaves, although it isn't fall. It's such a mystery. I smile. It's not a mystery at all. I think my painted ladies talk amongst themselves of how their great-great-grandma, too far back to say, was saved from being eaten by a jay. This young girl made a house for her, they whisper as they fly, a painted garden in a box, so she'd see beauty as she hung in that half-sleep that we've all known. This is the girl, but older now. We visit her each spring to give her back the love she gave to us so long ago. It's not a mystery to me. I think I know.
the end. And on the back of this page, it tells you how you can build your own butterfly house, which we're gonna talk about later. What I like about that book is it shows you the whole life cycle of a butterfly. They use the word larva, but I use the word caterpillar. And it has a big fancy name. It's called metamorphosis, metamorphosis. It means change. And that's what we call what happens when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, metamorphosis. That's a very cool word. Well, today the rest of our books are gonna be about monarch butterflies because monarch butterflies are very special. They do something really cool. They migrate in the wintertime someplace warmer. And you may think, well, birds migrate, um, other animals hibernate. What makes the monarch's migration so cool? Well, what's so cool about a monarch migration is that they go to the same place every year. So it's different monarch butterflies, but they follow the exact same path. And for example, there are special trees in Mexico that in the wintertime are gonna be covered in monarch butterflies. That's where they all go. So you'll start to see in spring some monarch caterpillars and those caterpillars will become butterflies and lay eggs. And then those eggs will hatch into caterpillars and they'll become butterflies and so on four times. And that fourth generation is the generation that's gonna fly all the way to Mexico or California or Florida and they're going to hang out together on this tree and then they fly back and start laying more eggs. So that's really cool and special that monarch butterflies do. So our big words today are metamorphosis. Think of that as change. That's where they change from caterpillar to butterfly. And our other big word is migration. Migration, that's where they fly from where we live all the way down to Mexico where it's warmer for the winter. So I have another fun story for you because I love monarch butterflies and so does this little girl. It's called Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. It's by Alan Madison and Kevin Hawks. Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. Velma Gratch was the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Frida, the oldest, had gone through first grade first followed by Fiona. Now it was Velma's turn. The chorus teacher remembered Frida best because she had a voice like an angel. The gym teacher remembered Fiona best because she ran like the devil. And the first grade teacher, Mr. Plexipus, fondly remembered both sisters because of Frida's miraculous math and Fiona's spectacular spelling. Everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal had magnificent memories of the older Gratch girls, but they could hardly even recall Velma's name. This made Velma feel as if she did not belong in the first grade at all. She wanted to curl into a ball and roll right back into kindergarten. Of course you belong, cooed Velma's mother, trying to cheer her up. You've only just begun. Soon everyone will notice you. Velma couldn't wait. She needed to be noticed now. In chorus, she sang the loudest so the teacher could hear her best. In gym, she ran the slowest so that the teacher could see her best. And in class, she refused to read and muddled her math. Mr. Plexipus lamented that she was the first Gratch sister ever sent to the principal's office. This brought a small smile to Velma's lips. Littlest Scratch, why are you singing so loudly in chorus and running so slowly in gym, inquired Principal Crossley. Because, answered Velma, I want you to remember me just like you remember Frida and Fiona. The principal's owlish eyes opened wide. But my dear, those Gratches are remembered for good things. Velma's small smile pretzel twisted into a full-blown frown. Science was Velma's favorite subject. She had learned many fabulous facts, like how a rainbow is born and why a volcano burps. The latest lesson was all about butterflies. Mr. Plexipus explained that a butterfly starts as an egg. The egg turns into a caterpillar. The caterpillar disappears into a chrysalis, 
which is a little sack and does not come out until it has changed into a beautiful butterfly. He called this change metamorphosis. Hey! Metamorphosis. Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, so she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Metamorphosis. 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 Frida, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her older sister. No, we learned worms, Frida replied. Fiona, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her middle sister. No, we found out about frogs, Fiona stated. Well, Velma said proudly, we are studying butterflies and, and metal more for this. That's a funny way she remembered how to say metamorphosis. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. Velma read everything in the library about butterflies. She discovered that there are 20,000 different kinds, which was a lot. She adored the ones with colorful names, brown elfin, frosted flasher, sleepy orange, and the ones with funny names, comma, question mark, American snout, not to mention the ones with strange names, morpho, painted lady, gossamer wing. But her favorite butterfly of all was the orange and black monarch. When it got cold, all the monarchs would fly south to Mexico to stay warm. Velma thought this was an amazing coincidence because last winter vacation, she and her family had also flown to Mexico to stay warm. So what's that fancy word we learned for that? Migration. In science, Mr. Plexipus announced that they would take a class trip to the Butterfly Conservatory, a place where real butterflies were collected and cared for. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Conservatory, conservatory, conservatory. Frida, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her older sister. Absolutely, we went to the museum, Frida replied. Fiona, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her middle sister. Absolutely, we went to the aquarium, Fiona stated. Well, Velma said proudly, we're going to the can, can, can serve the story. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. The butterfly conservatory was surrounded by fancy flower beds and bedecked with banners of butterflies. Velma was so excited, her knobbly knees wobbled, her spaghetti arms trembled, and her carroty curls shook. A sharp-nosed woman holding a clipboard introduced herself. I am your tour guide. Inside, a butterfly might land on you, but please don't touch its wings. Does anyone know why? Velma's hand shot up. Because they're made of teeny tiny scales, that could rub off like dust, and that is not good, she explained. Precisely, said the guide. What's your name? I'm Velma, the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Hmm, I don't think I know your sisters, the guide commented as they entered the rainforest room. It was a magical space, slathered in tall trees and tangled vines. Water gurgled over rocks and butterflies of every variety, giant swallowtails, short-tailed skippers, pygmy blues, and best of all, monarchs flew up to forever. The guide explained that when it got colder in a couple of weeks, she would take the monarchs into the park and let them go free so they could fly to Mexico. This traveling was called migration. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked through the rainforest. Migration, migration, migration. A gorgeous green comma rested on Randy's head. The class oohed. A baby brown elfin settled on Sandy's nose. The class awed. A big blue morpho alighted on Andy's shoulder. The class gasped. But no one single butterfly landed on any part of Velma. Time to leave, instructed Mr. Plexipus as they neared the exit. A tear formed in a distant corner of Velma's eye. All she wanted was one single tingly touch of a butterfly. 
On a near branch sat a mostly lovely monarch. How she yearned to pet those velvety wings. She moved slowly. The class was leaving. One more inch. It was so pretty. She froze. If she touched its wings, it might. Velma couldn't do it. She couldn't hurt a butterfly. Come now, Velma, Velma we have to go. Sadly, Velma turned away. And at that very moment, the most marvelous thing happened. The monarch hopped from its branch and roosted right on Velma's finger. Velma was in heaven. The bus is waiting, her teacher called. Velma placed her finger next to the branch. Bye-bye, butterfly, she whispered. But the monarch didn't move. We're closing, said the guide. Velma lightly blew on the butterfly. It didn't budge. Without ever touching the butterfly's wings, everyone tried to get the monarch to fly, crawl, or walk off Velma's finger, but nothing worked. At last, Velma was told to leave with the butterfly still pointed, perched on her pointer. It stayed there on the bus ride home. It stayed there when she slept and was still there when she awoke. It stayed during gym, math, reading, ballet, soccer, day in and day out, it stayed put on that pointer. Soon everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal knew about Velma and her butterfly. Mr. Plexipus lamented that Velma was positively the first scratch ever sent to the principal's office twice. This stuck an oversized frown on Velma's face. Velma, Principal Crossley commanded, it's time for the butterfly to go. Oh, I've tried to get it to go, Velma moaned, but it just won't. Well, no one will ever forget this, the principal fumed. Velma's frown pretzel twisted into a small smile. Hey, I know what to do, she proclaimed. My gray son. Velma paraded Principal Crossley, Mr. Plexipus, her class, Frida, and Fiona to the park. Car horns honked, people yelled, but despite all the commotion, the monarch did not move. A cool wind from the west blew through the field. In the middle stood the tour guide from the conservatory, carefully opening an enormous sack. A single monarch butterfly stepped out, looked around, and flitted away. It was trailed by ten, then ten more, soaring up and up until the sky overflowed with thick clouds of orange and black. What's happening, wondered Frida. Why are you letting them go, demanded Fiona. Migration, answered the guide. My gray son, repeated Velma. The wind tossed Velma's hair and tickled her butterfly's wings. The monarch jumped onto her nose as if to give her a kiss and then took flight to join its friends. Over the treetops it flew, over the skyscrapers and up into the wild blue, orange and black yonder on its way to Mexico. Velma, shouted Principal Crossley, and every eye turned to her. Oh, no, breaded Velma, sure that she was about to become the only Gratch ever sent to the principal's office three times. That was way cool, the principal said, and one and all bobbled their heads in way cool agreement. Then, with her fine finger, where the monarch had still sat a tingle, Velma, followed by her two sisters, floated home. The... End. I think that was way cool. And I'm kind of jealous. I would love for a butterfly to land and stay on my finger. Well, in that book, we talked a little bit about metamorphosis. So I want to sing a fun song with you guys about metamorphosis. It kind of sounds like the itsy bitsy spider. It's called the fuzzy little caterpillar. The fuzzy little caterpillar curled upon a leaf, spun her little chrysalis and then fell fast asleep. While she was sleeping, she dreamed that she could fly. And when she opened up, she was a butterfly. So I thought that was cute because, you know, she starts as a little caterpillar, then she's going to spin her chrysalis and then sleep for a long time and wake up a butterfly. So one of the things I want to do with you guys today is show you my butterfly habitat. So I'm going to read a book. It's called A Butterfly Called Hope. And in this book... It has real pictures of a little girl who built her own habitat. And so after I read this book, I will show you guys the habitat that I built and have been raising monarchs all summer. I've had three 
generations so far that have hatched with me and then flown into the world. So this might be the generation that's going to fly to Mexico. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to read this book, A Butterfly Called Hope, and then I'm going to show you guys how you can make your own habitat. But that's what's so good about this book is she gives you step-by-step -step directions on how you can build a monarch habitat. It's called A Butterfly Called Hope, and it's by Mary Alice Monroe. And it doesn't use paint or drawings. It uses real pictures. So it says photography by Barbara J. Bergwarf. So this is neat because you'll get to see real pictures. A butterfly called Hope. In my mother's garden, there are many flowers, pink, blue, yellow, and orange. They open their petals to the sun. I call them flying flowers. And she has different butterflies. This is a monarch, a cloudless sulfur, a gulf fritillary, and a black swallowtail. I look at a green milkweed leaf and see a bright yellow and black bug staring back at me. Chewing, chewing, chewing. Mommy, come quick, what is it? Will it bite me or sting me? Will it make me sick? Don't be afraid, my mother says. It won't hurt you. That is a caterpillar. Someday it will grow to be a beautiful butterfly. What kind of butterfly will it be, I ask, still afraid. My mother says, let's take the caterpillar to Nana Butterfly. She will know. We place the caterpillar gently on a leaf in a big glass jar. I carry it in my lap in my mother's car. Nana Butterfly looks in the jar. You have a monarch caterpillar. You can leave it with me. I'll take good care of it and set the butterfly free. No, I tell her, because I love my caterpillar. I want to keep it. Mommy, can I please? Each morning, I put clean paper towels on the bottom of the aquarium and add fresh milkweed from the garden. Through the glass, I can watch my caterpillar getting bigger and bigger. All day, it eats and grows and poops. Caterpillar poop is called frass. And that's really funny, but I can tell you, they do poop a lot, more than you think they're going to. So you do have to change out the paper towels a lot. I make sure my caterpillar has plenty of fresh milkweed to eat. One day, I do not see the caterpillar eating. I do not see it crawling. I do not see it at all. Mommy, come quick, where is it? My mother points to a jade green chrysalis hanging at the top of the tank. She tells me the change is beginning. Eight days later, I see the chrysalis is now black. Mommy, come quick. What happened to my chrysalis? Is it sick? Mommy says, don't worry. Your butterfly is almost here. Come and look very closely. You can see the butterfly's wing. We watch and wait. A new butterfly slowly emerges. She clings to her empty chrysalis. Her wings are soft and droop like a brilliant orange and black cape. We watch her velvety wings slowly grow larger and larger. When she is ready, she tests them, fluttering one, two, three times. My mother says it's time for her to fly. No, I cry. I want to keep my butterfly. A butterfly needs to fly free to sip sweet nectar from flowers. She will lay eggs on milkweed leaves, so there will be more butterflies. If you name your butterfly wherever it goes, it will be yours. Can I give the butterfly my name, I ask? My mother smiles. Yes, I think your name is perfect. My monarch opens her wings to the sun, fluttering in joy. Then on a soft breeze, my butterfly flies. I feel the warm sun on my face as I call out, your name is Hope. So that is the story of a butterfly called Hope. And in the back of this book, it shows you all the different stages of metamorphosis. It teaches you all kinds of vocabulary like metamorphosis, which we've talked about, and migration. 
And then also gives you all kinds of tips for how to care for caterpillars, where caterpillars may migrate. So this is a great book to check out if you wanna learn more facts about your butterflies. Okay, I have another fun song. It's called the Metamorphosis Song. It kind of sounds like a Christmas song you may recognize. It goes, first comes a butterfly who lays an egg. Out pops a caterpillar with many legs. Oh, see the caterpillar eat and then a little chrysalis to sleep in. Oh, 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 wait and see. Oh, 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 what can it be? Out from the chrysalis, my, oh, my. Out pops a beautiful butterfly. So that's kind of a song to help us remember metamorphosis. Okay, so I promised you guys that at the end of the story that I would show you my butterfly habitat. And so I wanna show you this. I just used a plain tub and I put in paper towels and sticks and leaves. Let me pull this up carefully because there is a chrysalis hanging from the ceiling. So here's my chrysalis and it's hanging from the ceiling and it's black, so it's almost ready to hatch. But inside the bucket, I have two fresh green ones. Let me see if I can pull it out. I wanna be very careful because I don't wanna hurt it. So are you able to see the fresh new green chrysalis hanging from the stick? Oops. Let me be very careful with my friend. This chrysalis hanging from the tub is black and it's turning clear. So you can kind of see it's about to hatch. Wouldn't it have been so cool if he was ready to hatch right now? Oh, I wish. You can see he had four siblings that have already hatched. They were ready to go last week. So that's very cool. So inside your tub, you wanna put some paper towels. Like I said, the caterpillars poop a lot. And I have lots of sticks so they can make a chrysalis on those sticks and they have somewhere to land when they hatch. And then when I had lots of caterpillars, I would give them fresh leaves every day. And the way I was able to get so many monarch caterpillars is in the spring, I made myself a butterfly garden. So I looked up all the different kinds of flowers that butterflies like to eat. Like in our books, I talked about milkweed a lot. So I planted a bunch of those flowers and then I kept getting lots and lots of monarch caterpillars. And so I would keep them in this habitat and then when they were ready to hatch, I would take them outside and let them go free. Now you'll notice there aren't any holes inside of my tub. And so every day you need to make sure for a good 10 minutes, you open up the lid and let fresh oxygen get in there. But that's all you really need to do. I would say open your habitat maybe twice a day and just get them some fresh air. And that way you can watch all the caterpillars move around. But like I said, here's my little friend. I wish you were here to see it in person. You can see as his wings are starting to form, he's probably gonna hatch in a couple of days and that's very exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him back very carefully. I wanted to show you guys also some different books that we have in our nonfiction section. So today we read some fiction books, but if you wanna learn more facts about monarchs and migration and metamorphosis and how important they are to the earth, I have a bunch of books in the nonfiction section. It's nonfiction, so you look them up by their number, their Dewey Decimal number. And for monarch butterflies, it's gonna be 595-789. And I'm gonna have a lot of these books out on the display upstairs by their section. So if you wanna learn more about monarch butterflies, I'm gonna have a lot of really good nonfiction books for you guys to read about different facts about monarchs. Won't that be cool? Okay, so it's time for our story time to end. And I want to sing a goodbye song with you guys. I've had a lot of fun today, and I can't wait to see you on Tuesdays. Um, this song is called The More We Get Together, and I'm sure a lot of you know it. So if you want to sing with me, that would be great. And it will start it like this. 
The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Bye friends, thanks for watching this story time. And I hope you guys are able to see some butterflies this fall on their migration down to Mexico. Bye.